All right, ladies and gentlemen, here's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to talk about four things. We're going to talk about how to multiply rational numbers and square roots. We're going to talk about how to multiply square roots together. We're going to talk about division of square roots. And then we're going to talk about, well, this ugly thing called rationalizing the denominator. It's really not that difficult. We'll make it as easy as we can. So anyway, let's get started. Uh, let's talk about the first point first. Uh, I guess that would make sense now, wouldn't it? Go in an order. So if we have a number like 5 times the square root of 2, well, the square root of 2, it's irrational. It's as simple as you can write it. You can't write it any simpler than that. It's about 1, 4, 1 point, 1, uh, sorry, it's about 1.414, blah, 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 blah. It keeps going on forever. It's irrational. You cannot simplify it any further. This would not be the square root of 10, and it would not be 10 root 2. It wouldn't be anything like that. Nobody gets confused when it says like 5 times a, times pi, for example. And if the square root of 2, if we had like a special symbol for it, like say a backwards k, then 5 times the backwards k, well, you wouldn't be tempted to multiply like, like you would be if it was written like this. Sometimes people want to multiply those two things together. So the short of it is uh, if you have a rational number being multiplied by an irrational number, you can't just put them together. You can't just multiply them together. I'm gonna leave it just like that. That's as simple and accurate as you can write it. Just like that right there. Okay, onward and upward to other things. We're talking about number two. Let's say we're going to uh, multiply something like the square root of five times the square root of three. Well, this would actually be the same as the square root of five times three, which would be just the square root of 15. So there's actually a shortcut, a property that you can use. Square root of A times the square root of B, that can be written as the square root of A times B. So sometimes that's beneficial because actually, like when we simplify something like the square root of 75, we actually use that property because we recognize that 75 is 25 times 3 and the square root of 25 is 5. So we separate them like this. We don't always have to write the step out, but that's how it works. So sometimes it's beneficial to go ahead and break them apart like we did here. Um, but sometimes it's beneficial to put them together. Like in this case right here, say we had the square root of, oh, I don't know, six times the square root of two. Well, that would be the square root of 12. Now, when dealing with square roots, you're not done and simplified until you've gone ahead and figured out if there were any perfect squares that are factors of the radicand. Well, 12 is 4 times 3. The square root of 4 is 2. So there we go. Now we're done. So this is the property right here of square roots. It's not like made up. It's not a law. It's just how they work. Okay. Onward and upward. Okay, number three, division. Now, division, like this, you have to be very, very careful. See, those two things right there, not written very carefully, but they are actually different. This actually equals the square root of four, which is just two. That's what that one right there equals. But this one right here, man, well, this would actually turn out to be just the square root of two, and here's why. You see the square root of eight, is the square root of four times the square root of two. Well, that's supposed to say two, so that'd be two root two, okay? Now, that would make this right here two times the square root of two divided by two, right? Because the square root of eight is this thing on top, and two divided by two is just one, so you're left with the square root of two. Totally, totally different things. So you can't, just like with multiplication, how you couldn't multiply, uh, sorry, three times five like that, well, you can't divide either. You can't divide a rational number with the radicand of the irrational number. It's not how it works. However, the, the way that it does work is if you had something like, well, let's say we had something like the square root of 15 over the square root of three. Now, that could be rewritten like this. And that's just the square root of five. So we've got the, the property similar to like what we had with multiplication. But if you have the ratio of the square root of a ratio, well, that would be equal to the ratio of the square roots. What? 
Oh, that's kind of ugly to say. It's easy to see. Anyway, sometimes it's more beneficial to have it written this way, and sometimes it's more beneficial to have it written that way. It really depends on the context. It depends on the situation that you're dealing with. Now, let's go ahead and talk about like something like if this was the other way. What if it was square root of 3 in the numerator and the square root of 15 in the denominator? Oh, man. When we reduce that, we end up with 1 over the square root of 5. We could write the square root of 1 right there, but I mean, it doesn't really matter, right? Square root of 1 is just 1. Well, here's the problem. The problem is that square roots, um, irrational numbers, they can't go in the denominator. The denominator has to be rational. So there's a couple facts that we need to be aware of. And they're pretty obvious when you state them out. So first of all, a number divided by itself is just 1, right? So anything divided by itself is just 1. Also, the square root of 5 times the square root of 5, well, wouldn't that be the square root of 25, which would just equal 5? Well, that's a rational number. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to take this fraction, this fraction right here, we're going to multiply it right here. Now it's equal to 1. The square root of 5 divided by the square root of 5 is equal to 1. So when you multiply something by 1, it doesn't change its value, but it is going to change how it looks. Kind of like getting change for money, right? You could have a $20 bill, or you could have, you know, a 10, a 5, and 5 ones. So 1 times the square root of 5, that's just equal to the square root of 5, right? The square root of 5 times the square root of 5, well, we just saw that that equals plain old 5. That's okay. That's called rationalizing the denominator. That's right. Now, one thing to get not to get tripped up on right here, one thing to be aware of is that only the irrational parts of a denominator are an issue. If you have a rational part of a denominator, it doesn't really matter. So, like, uh, I don't know, the square root of 5 over 8, there's no problems there. But the square root of 5 divided by 8 root 2, now there's a problem. We don't need to multiply though by 8 root 2 over 8 root 2. That's just going to be ridiculous. I'll go ahead and do it anyway. But what you're going to see is when you're done, you have a whole bunch of reducing that needs to be taken care of. So we got 8 and then we got the square root of 10. And then in the denominator, we've got 64 times 2 because 8 times 8 is 64, right? Like 8 times 8 is 64. So, and 64 times 2, oh my goodness, is that 128? I hope so. That'd be awful embarrassing if it wasn't. Turns out we actually have to reduce this though. You see, there's eight happens to go into 128. Dang, boy, that's just ugly. It goes in 16 times. So this is actually gonna be the square root of 10 over 16. Now, if we did this a little bit smarter, so let's go ahead and take a look at our original thing right here. Now you see the square root of two right there. This is the issue. We can't have that in the denominator. And to get rid of that, all we really need to multiply by is the square root of two over the square root of two. So the numerator, square root of 10. Now the denominator is eight times two, because right, the square root of two times the square root of two is just two. And that would of course be 16. So but writing it a little bit neater, square root of 10, for 16 and you're done so anyway i hope this was helpful if it was you could really help me out by clicking like and maybe even sharing it and as always you should vis visit my website it's the beardedmathman.com at that site what you're going to find is all kinds of good math topics that are discussed like square roots and other things in fact if you're a high school student you can work your way all the way through high school with my website. It's in under construction right now, but if you're watching this video, then uh, I'm right on pace with where you're at. So anyway, check it out. Also, if you want to help me make more videos like this, you could also visit my Patreon site, patreon.com slash bearded math man. I'll put links in the description. Anyway, Thank you for watching, and uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. Oh boy, I got all kinds of ugly right there. Well, that's a sad face. Hey, real quick, have you ever noticed that a smiley face looks really nice and innocent until you give it eyebrows? Then it looks like maybe it peed in a punch bowl or something. I don't really know. It's scary. Anyway, thank you for watching.